Hi, this is Rocky Raccoon and welcome to my very first full length tutorial on how to rig a character in Toon Boom Harmony. First, we're going to import our reference file. It's a Photoshop file. We're going to import all the separate layers. Okay. Okay. Whoa, it's like super huge, like gigantic. That's because I set the import mode to, of the file to be actual size. So the Photoshop file is like really big. Now we have to rescale the whole thing. Okay, let's do this. As you can see, there are so many drawing layers. Many of them are drawing substitutions that I created for my Photoshop rig. We're gonna group the whole thing. I want the main node view layer to be very clean. Uh, and this is not it. It's time to rescale the whole thing. It's too big. Uh, I think a half would do. Uh, no. A quarter. Yes, a quarter. Ah, perfect! I want the rig's front view to be like almost symmetrical, like 99% symmetrical. We're gonna move the front view to the center of the camera. And a symmetrical grid will help us do that. As you can see, I have the snap to grid options turned on. Okay. Oh, wait. What? Uh, something's wrong. Oh, I just unchecked it. Wow, okay. Okay, so we got our grid. Now we will move the front view to the middle of the grid. I will switch the animation mode to animation off. So uh, the pack doesn't create any keyframes. Now I'm just going to move... The whole thing to the right. We're also going to zoom in to get more symmetrical accuracy. I drew an X symbol so I can move the front view to the center more easily. We're almost there. Almost perfectly perfect symmetry. Oh, I got it. It's a light pixel. Almost got it. You know what? I think that's it. Uh, like I said, almost perfectly perfect symmetry. <laughs> okay, let's start tracing. I'm gonna do the eye first. For some reason, I like to save a lot. I don't want to lose all my files. Like, what if it crashes? Uh, in like, out of nowhere. I got like 11 drawing substitutions for the hand. We're gonna trace them later. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the head. For some reason, the Photoshop layer's uh, boundary box is like the size of the canvas. Their color layer is full of weird vector paths. I don't know why, but we're gonna remove them. You can use the apply to all the drawing layers so you can remove them with ease. Now the boundary box is not gigantic anymore. Also, one weird thing. All the Photoshop imported layers share the same drawing substitutions for some reason. So now I'm gonna put the mouse substitutions. Oh no, the neck. Um, the mouse. Yes. All the mouse drawing substitutions in one layer and I'm gonna delete all of the rest. And now the hand. Okay. These are some hand poses that I think I might use very often. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's start tracing. I'm gonna lock the whole reference thing. That's because uh, you don't want to accidentally click on one of those layers while rigging your character. I like to turn on the light table, like the light bulb thing, to focus on the layer I'm working with. We're gonna rename the palette for Ollie over here. And delete the unnecessary color swatches, like ew, that red, 
No, uh, I'm going to start tracing the eye with a polyline tool. It's like the pen tool in Photoshop and Illustrator. It's uh, basically very easy to use. Now I'm just going to adjust the curves. I want them to look better. Uh, a little more thickness, I think. Uh, no, that's too much. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now I will use the paint tool to paint the eye white. We got the eyeball, we need the pupil. Now, I use the ellipse tool to draw a round shape. Black color, okay. Gonna rescale that a little bit. Mm, let's see. Okay, that's good enough. Now I'm gonna center the pivot to the drawing using uh, one of the scripts that I got on Toon Boom Discord community. You should uh, really check it out. Like, that's so cool. Uh, we're gonna make a groove for the whole rig. Again, I want the main node view to be clean so I can do the compositing, right? Shouldn't be too many drawing layers uh, in your main node view. Uh, that's for compositing stuff, meaning the small, the small nodes only. Uh, I'm gonna rearrange the nodes. The more drawing layers you have, the more you'll have to expand your node view. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm gonna start adding the master pegs. The master peg. Uh, uh, the uh, upper body peg. Body peg. And the head. Okay, one more. This is going to be the face pack. You'll see what I mean later. I will put the eye and pupil in a separate composite layer. Remember to make the composite pass-through mode. Uh, you can uh, change it to the default setting in uh, the preferences. I have some preferences I want to share with you guys. I also have autosave for every 10 minutes turned on, but I still like to save manually. Uh, putting certain things into specific uh, composite layers will help me manage uh, and rearrange my notes better. If there are too many notes connected to the main composite, things will get pretty messy. I'm gonna give the eye and pupil layer their own peg layer because I don't want to animate on the drawing layer. I got this script that will uh, copy a pivot point from a, one layer to another, so that's cool. Remember to uncheck the animate using the animation tools in a drawing layers uh, because we don't want to animate on them, remember? Set the pivot mode to parent peg. That way, when you're animating something, it will only create keyframes on their peg layers. We're gonna start rearranging the nose. It's getting a little messy already. I'm gonna put the parent packs further on top. Uh, okay. So, I want the pupil to be inside the eye. First, I'm gonna separate the black and white color in my eye layer. Uh, for example, if the pupil is a different color, it will also overlap the black lines. I'm gonna try the color override node first. This node can be used to uh, separate or render uh, specific colors or um, uh, put the textures in la those layers. I'm gonna choose the color black so we can render it separately.
There are also many modes for the colors. Uh, if, I chose the co if I choose the color white and I select color not visible, it will only render the black color only. See, I can only select the black layer. The white layer, the white part that you see is of the Photoshop layer. Now, we will use the col another color override node to render the white part only. Hmm, something's not right. It's uh, supposed to render the white part only. Those override modes are, are very confusing for beginners. So I'm going to choose a re render selected colors only. It's going to render the white part only. Overall, the color override node can be very confusing for beginners. So I'm going to try a different technique to separate the black line and the white part. Hmm, let me think. Uh-huh. One thing special about Toon Boom Harmony is that one drawing layer has four art layers. Usually, everything stays in the line art, so the I will put the white part into the color art layer. We will cut the white fill and paste it to the color art layer. You can see that there are blue outlines to indicate that it is the color art layer. Now we're gonna do the pupil inside eye thingy. So this is a pupil layer. I'm gonna use the cutter node to do the clipping mask effect. We have to invert the cutter's map so that the pupil overlaps the eye layer. Good! It works! Oh yeah! There is another way to do this uh, simple type of clipping mask. I'm gonna connect the color art to the left side of the pupil node. It will create a mat or mask. And you can see that it actually works. We're going to start expanding the node view again. I'm going to connect the eye peg to the pupil peg. So the eye peg is, will be the parent of the pupil peg. And the pupil peg will move with the eye peg. Now I'm going to collapse the whole eye peg layer and clone it. You can also use duplicate layer. But uh, I'm going to tell you the difference about clone and duplicate later. We're going to start renaming things uh, left and right, L and R. Now we're going to flip the eye layer and reposition the whole eye peg to get the other eye. I'm going to change the pivot mode for a while to flip the eye layer only. Only the eye layer, not its peg layer. You can manually move the eye layer to the other side, but uh, I have a better way. We're going to get super symmetrical here, you guys. Uh, we're going to use the pivot point and multiply it by 2 to get it to the other side perfectly. You can also change the pivot point to a rounder number, but uh, I like to get the best accuracy possible. Or you can get your calculator and do the math. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you perfect symmetry. That's perfectly perfect. Like, yeah. Hold on. Where is my pupil layer? Oh god, I just realized that I transform the eye layer instead of the whole eye pack. So I'm just going to copy the position of the eye pack. I'm just going to cut it. Uh, going to do some. Yeah, I'm just going to cut it and paste it to there. There you go. Uh, wait. Oh, that's perfect. 
Now that we have both pupils, we're going to make an eye controller. This controller will have the ability to move both uh, pupil layers, uh, rotate them, scale them, or even skew them. So I'm going to grab my round controller that I store in my library and put it in. So I will use that uh, to make a, an eye controller. We're going to center the pivot to its drawing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create 